everyone how are you doing this is pedal welcome to facts and two cents or facts and two cents book club um i hope you guys are having a great day i hope you've ha had a great weekend having a great saturday i hope all is well um again this is our book club and so far i see lydia in the chat <laughs> I'm like, where's our book club people? Where are our Two Cents crew? They are missing in action. Oh, I see Joan popped up. Hello, Lydia. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> and I see Joan Garcia is here. Hello. Hello, Joan and our 33 squatties in the chat um, saying hello to all of you. Hope you, again, hope you guys are having a great day and a great Saturday. Hope you've had a great time reading the book. And um, what I'm going to do, if not enough squatties of, shop, you know, of our wonderful community have shown up for, um, uh, for the book club uh, or Two Cents Crew, which the goal is that to have the Two Cents Crew in the book club, um, in the under live space for the first hour. But if I don't see any of you, I'm just going to open it up to everyone. And so that way we can have a discussion about what we have um, gotten out of um, Hire is Waiting. I know everybody was excited about Spare, but we have put Spare on the side for a minute. It, and we are going on to um, Hire is Waiting. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful um, experience to get to learn about Tyler Perry's life and realizing that I really knew nothing about him at all in any sense of the word. <laughs> And it was just wonderful to be able to get to um, to get to know him and at least through the book and uh, to be able to see his life so far. And wow, what a trip. What an absolute trip. So um, I look forward to that. So I am, uh, since it's only Lydia, well, Lydia is awesome. <laughs> But since Lydia is in the chat and Joan is in the chat, what I'm going to do, and since we have 61 of our awesome squatties here um, uh, that are listening in, so so that we can have a chat, and so it's, I'm not going to put Lydia and Joan on the spot, I would love to hear if you guys you know, would like to call in and chat with me. Um, that would be fantastic. What I'll do is let me put the, in, um, the link in the... I'm going to put the link in the chat. So if you'd like to call in and chat and um, either that or um, I will just open it up to everyone so that I'm not putting anyone on the spot and we can have a great, great chat about Hire is Waiting because I just love to know, you know, what your take on it is. You know, were you inspired? What, you know, what about it was inspiring? What was surprising? If you're anything like me that don't know anything about Tyler Perry's life, everything was uh, <laughs> surprising because, again, I knew nothing about his life, you know, other than a few of his, um, uh, the names of a few of his television show. And I did see the diary of a mad black woman. And I'm um, so, but I love who he is and what he represents as a person. So, um, yeah. Um, so since I don't see um, the other um Two Cent Screw members, um, I am going to go ahead and open up the chat so anyone can pop in, everyone could pop in and be a part of the live chat and also could um, call in as as well. So um, let me just give, uh, just give me two seconds. I am just going to jump over um, to YouTube and open up the chat. So just give me a couple of seconds and I will be right. Actually, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music and... Um, I'm just gonna go over and open up um, the live chat. So there we go, a little bit of music and I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed my little bit of a little bit of music. I think I'll just keep that on in the background there. Hopefully it's not it's not like too distracting. So um, all of our squaddies could come in and join uh, the live chat if they like. That would be awesome. And yeah, so the chat is now open. Everyone can come in and join the chat if they like. And uh, yeah, I see, I see Jay Patterson is right. Hello, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyone can come in, join the chat, um, who obviously if you've been, um, you know, subscribed for more than a week, definitely you can join the chat. And if you did, um, the link to call in is in the chat. Uh, so definitely um, call in or let me know. Hi, Jeannie Hyde. How are you? I see you there. And Faith uh you are one um i see you and can eat this year hello guys and janice is here oh the whole crew is coming in all right so we can actually have a chat <laughs> about how it is waiting so um again i'm going to put the link in here in the chat so um if i'd love to hear you know i'd love some of you call in and let me know what you think um and we can have you know i'd love to have a bit of a round table if possible that would be awesome as well but I would just love to kick it off general, you know, just for a general idea what you guys thought about the book, like what, you know, what you thought about it overall, and then we'll pick out some parts that we can chat about. That would be awesome. Um, um, I know Hope's Garden, it was going to be the two cent screw in for the first hour and then I open it up, but our two cent screw are missing other than uh, Lydia, <laughs> other than Lydia Joan. So, <laughs> um, so I, I just opened it up early so everybody could come in and just chat um, about it, but I'd love to know. Um, again, the link is in the show notes. If you'd like to call in, please do. I'd love for you to come in. I'd love to hear your voice as well. Um, um, but what did you think of Hire is Waiting? Um, what, what is your overall thought? And then I, you know, um, you know, then we can go into some, you know, some little bit of details, but, um, I am going to go through the chat a little bit to see if anybody is talking about it. Um, yeah, tell, let us know what's your overall thought. I know one of the things for me is, um, it's just how your life could start. Like you, the beginning of your life doesn't have to dictate how it ends or how your life, um, you know, as an adult turn out or the choices you make. And it's really, really amazing to see because, you know, there's this thing, it's like, um, yes, we know the early years is important, but not everybody has the privilege of having early years that, um, you know, that is positive and encouraging and loving but that doesn't mean that you that when you grow up and you become an adult your life has to follow that same path you know so i that was one of the big things for me uh lydia says they love the book inspiring do not know of his did not know of his ab abusive home yes very much so that you know especially when you didn't know anything about his life Definitely, that was like, wow. Um, what else? Let's see. Hello, Fatima. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Um, um, Bassini says, a pedal I want to hear reviews before buying the book. Um, there are a lot of reviews. I mean, you know, we are obviously going to talk about it, but um, there, if you look on Amazon or wherever you find, there are a lot of reviews there as well. So you can definitely check that out. Um, I absolutely love it. And so um, I will definitely recommend it. That's my review for it. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Else, um, Joan says, Petal, like Tyler was told at Oprah's gathering, he deserves to be here. Very, very true. 
very, very true. He totally deserves it, especially when you grow up in an environment that tells you differently, that basically tells you you're not worth anything or you're not, you know, will never grow up to be anything much, you know. So there's always that will be that insecurity of, oh my gosh, you know, or that, um, you feel like oh my gosh i don't deserve do you know should i even be in this room among these great people and you have imposter syndrome which i have a lot i have to say um and so you know it's wonderful that he's in the place and um that he knows that yes i deserve to be here and I, I know he told a story i think it was yolanda adams at that oprah event when they had the legends ball when he was feeling like oh i don't know if i should be here among these legends and i think yolanda adams is the one i think it was yolanda adams he said that's the one that you know pulled him aside and says you deserve to be here and he just internalized that and took that in and you know really really inspired him to really go on and feeling like he deserves to be there um let's see uh, let's see lydia says i love i love that an early age he had an attachment to god and his fate remained strong even in times of great tragedy and stress yeah very 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 true and on that note let's let's follow that you know i just i'd love to hear you guys take on his early life you know like what his his experience in his early life i'd love to hear you guys take on that um some of the things he experienced um both negative and positive um terry says uh Tyler spoke about his ab abusive parents growing up his Bruce's parent, shall I say, his abusive father, growing up, I was really sad. What was sad? Um, I mean, obviously, overall, the situation was sad. But specifically, um, Terry, if you want to elaborate um, those, the moments, the sad moments for you, um, um, that would be also great. Um, obviously, you know, as you read in the book, his dad is very really really abusive not just to him but is also his mom i'd love to hear your take and just also his reaction to his mom being abused i'd love to hear your take too and again um the the link is in the show notes please feel free to call in i'd love to hear your voice uh please feel free to call in and um and uh chat about that so um Let's see who else. I'll put the link again in there. There it is. So yeah. Um, one of the things that I I love is um, and, and not I, I wouldn't say love, but um, it was very. I guess I have you know. Two, I feel two ways about it, and I love the fact that they had you know they had a place of refuge. It felt like on a Sunday, they could go to church and feel like they have a place of refuge and a place where they can go and feel, you know, get their spirits lifted after, you know, abuse. But, you know, it, knowing there, um, going there on Sunday, knowing the night before was all abuse. And it just, it broke my heart because one of the things that you realize is, you know, they went to a place of refuge but it was there was not much help in the way of someone standing up for them and someone standing in the gap for them yes they were the word and that lifted their spirits but the help wasn't there not from family or friends or any of those that could help them and even i think the minister was a relative they didn't really help them um, and to be able to counsel and be able to get them out of those that abusive situation. And I'm sure many in the family knew, you know. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear what your takes are on that as well. Um, uh, Lydia says he didn't go too deep into it, but I was curious about Emmett, Ernest, oh, uh, Emmett, I think his name is Emmett, uh, uh, Emmett's past. He started, uh, his start was rough and what he did and when 
he did not deal with that hurt, it passed on to his wife and kids. Yeah, um, we only know a little bit of, of what Tyler mentioned is that um, his dad also had an abusive past, but he didn't know that until he had this big, you know, uh, really bluntly, I guess, fight with him over the phone and, and basically bring up to him what he had done to him. Tyler didn't know about Emmett's past and what his um, life was as a child that he passed on to Tyler. Um, and it's amazing. I only learned today that Tyler's actually, his name is Emmett Jr. It's Emmett Perry Jr. And so it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And, um, but one could see why he He's only going by Tyler and not Emmett. Doesn't want to pass that on. Um, hi, Ghislaine. How are you? Um, good afternoon, everybody. That old book is very inspiring. Yes, it is. Tell us what's inspiring about it. What did you find inspiring about it? Um, give us some more details. Um, Louisa said, but I started reading the book in the beginning. I started to cry because he was being, how he was being treated. Um, I had to stop reading the book for several days. Yeah, it's very interesting because, um, well, and we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, it is very hard to read and especially knowing the abuse his mom went through and he went through and so that was very um but they were also you know on the flip side of that tyler also talked about those moments of rest that he had even in the midst of that abuse um when he went to aunt may and so i'd love to hear you guys take on his relationship with aunt may um his um and um you know, going to her broken down house, um, and of, on you know, I think a couple of weekends a month, and that be the moment where of rest, where he's away from his father and away from the abuse, and where he could feel loved, and you know, it's that kind of thing where you grow up with that in that that kind of poverty, but you are so rich in love. And that just, for me, rescued Tyler and gave him so much hope in spite of the poverty, in spite of all of that. It gave him so much hope and gave him that faith, you know, when he heard her singing uh, Precious Lord and, you know, and asked her um, about, you know, and he didn't really understand about talking to God. And she's like, well, you pray. And he, she's, she's like, well, when you pray, that means you're talking to Jesus. And th th that's when he finally realized like, oh, that's what that is. And so she cemented that faith in him, you know, about talking to God. And then one time a church, they talk, you know, the minister talked about, if you ask God for something, he'll give it to you. Or, you know, you can ask him for anything. And that sort of helps cement his faith as well. That, okay, I could go to God for what I need. And so, and we've seen the progress of that. So um, I'd love to hear your take on that as well. Um, let's see. Therese 1001 says, I got the book on Audible at work now. Looking forward to listening to it this evening. Oh, do. I mean, I'm, you know, and you can share with us at a later date how, what it meant to you. <laughs> um, so, and Joe Garcia says, I was teary eyed when, while going through the entire book, I listened to the audiobook. I have the audiobook as well. That's how I listen to it. Um, uh, what made you teary eyed? Uh, she's talking to uh, Rosa. What made you, what specifically made you teary eyed, uh, Joan? Love to hear that. Um, Let's see. Uh, Lydia says, "I uh, yes, I have the audio as well, and I enjoyed it. I wish he ha um, he would have narrated oh been uh, narrated it himself. Um, oh, as just like Harry did. So yeah, no, he didn't narrate it himself. But for me, I enjoyed it either way. I enjoyed his words. Um, yes." <laughs> Lydia's like, Emmett, not uh, not Ernest. <laughs> I haven't heard the name Ernest in a long time. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's see. 
Helene said, it's not where you started, but where you go with God's help. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes, I mean, you want to, everyone have the dream of starting out in a you know, positive environment, but not everybody is that fortunate. Not everybody, I think Tyler is a perfect example of it, you know, yes, you can have a really bad starting out, but your whole life could change and, and by the decisions you make and the fate that you have, um, you know, in regards to your dreams, etc. So, yeah, um, let's see. Lydia says, I love that even when others didn't believe in his dreams and vision, he held on. When he talked about um, when he talked about when Maxine, his mother, even told him to go work for the phone company. Yeah, exactly. And that's when um, I love that part when he talked about dream killers. Um, hang on one second. I'm going to find it. Yeah, when he talks about dream killers and it's like being careful who you share your dreams with, that even the most, even people who love you with, you know, who want the best for you, but because they don't have the vision that you have and their vision only, it can't, you know, they only have a limited view of things that even the ones that love you can kill your vision, like his mom who loved him and want the best for him, but she was afraid for him, you know, and they could have the best intention, but she was so afraid for him that, you know, because again, when she said that to him is when, um, you know, he was trying to get his plays up and, you know, he was not making any money and he's going to death and all of those things. And as we know, he ended up homeless at one point because uh, he's putting all his money into getting the play, his place to go and they're not. And so mom is like, do being practical is like, look, you know, you need to get a job. You need to get some insurance. You need to get some benefits, you know, and she's thinking as a mom, you know, and, and wanting the best for him. But even people who want the best for us can kill our dreams. And so we have to, um, we have to really not, you know, be sharing all our dreams with people who don't have the, you know, they just don't have the capacity to dream to, you know, at the level that you are as high as you can go. And so even though they want the best for you, you know, it's like, yeah, nope. <laughs> because, you know, especially at the time when he was doing it, you know, um, they, he, as he said, you know, there are so many things that was against them. You know, he was poor, he was black, he was, you know, all of those things that was against him, at, you know, when, when Maxine was saying this to him. And, you know, and again, she is coming from an era from, as he said, growing up in the Jim Crow era where none of this, you know, you weren't allowed to dream beyond, you know, maybe getting a job as a, you know, as a cook or as a housekeeper, or as he said, the telephone company and stuff, that is about as high as their vision could take them because that was what they were allowed, you know? So he understood where she was coming from, even though that still killed his dream. You know, it didn't kill it, but you know, it, that hurt. I'm sure that hurt a lot to hear that from his mom. So we have to protect our dreams. Um, and not share them with people who would who are naysayers. Um, let's see. Jen says, "I um, I was teary at, at all at all that Tyler went through, but God brought him through. His mother's words always touched me and reminded me of growing up in church. Ah, what specifically? What words um, that reminded you of going to, uh, growing up in church, uh, Joan? Um, I'm getting specific here because I want to hear all your thoughts." <laughs> Uh, Therese says, my mom loves me to pieces and she's my, and she is my biggest dream killer. Never finished my book. Pedal, um, pedal. That's why I kept pushing. I knew you could do it and you did. <laughs> um, yes. Um, you know, that's the thing. It's like people who love us can really 
can really kill the dreams but you know and again i talked about you yesterday or is that thank you for pushing me you know and i'm sorry that you went through that with your mom i'm sorry that um you know that she was that you know and i gosh and again knowing that it comes from a place of love and it's just fear and she wants the best for you and it's just like but you know they just can't see the vision <laughs> you know and so um i hope you are able to and as you helped me so now i know that you have a book that you haven't finished so now i could be encouraging you Doris to finish that book that you never finished and so i totally believe that you can feel and i'd love for you to share with us what your book is about if you want to but now we know now everybody in the chat know that you're writing a book that you haven't finished so now we can encourage you and um to be able to finish and you push me to do that book with the flowers and so i you know it's called a uh, light in a dark place and i really really appreciated that so thank you uh so much so now i could you know encourage you to get that dream back and be able to finish your book so that is fantastic um <laughs> Therese is like uh oh <laughs> Well, if you know anything about me, you know, I will push you until it does. <laughs> One of my friends is like, you know, not, you know, he's writing or something. And every time I see him, he's like, okay, so how is that project going? You know? <laughs> so I will remember because I, I totally believe you could do it just as you believe in me. And I definitely believe that you could finish it. So there you go. <laughs> She's smiling. Yes. Smiley face. Good, good, good. Um, Lydia says, and during the low moments, we see him now with all his success. But at one point, he was in a hotel room hoping the exhaust fume took him away. Never know what God has ahead of you. Hang on. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I learned today that that wasn't, you know, reading. Uh, I, I just thought of, you know, I'd read the book and I realized, oh, I hadn't really gone and re read up really about his life apart from the book. And according to what I read today, that wasn't the only time he had suicidal thoughts. He had those and he suffered from depression as well. And um, the abuse that is in the book is not the only abuse that he suffered. He suffered sexual abuse as well. And so he had a really horrendous childhood. I mean, as about as horrendous as you can get, you know, and to see where he is now. And so when you when he says that, you know, he wanted to end it. You understand why you understand going through that, you know, and then you see what a miracle it is where he is now. Um, Cookies and cream are awesome moderators here. She says, I love how Tyler didn't let his pain and disappointments cons consume him. He took his pain along with his sorrows and turned them into purpose. I truly admire him. He has a heart of gold. Exactly. I, yes, 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 yes. So much so. So much so. Again, it's like you can go two ways with this sort of thing. You can go like his dad did with his pain and continue the cycle of abuse and pass down his pain and his anger and his hurt and put that on his wife and kids. Or you can do what Tyler did, turn that into purpose and be, you know, be for other people what you would have want, um, you know, done for you and thank God for his mom. Um, one of the things that I find, um, let's see, You know, in terms of looking at his um, family, like the wider family, it, when you read the book, it's all like until he mentioned his two sisters, his older sister and brother. When you read the book, it's like he's an only child. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, he has family, <laughs> you know, and because the book is really literally about him and his mom and, you know, his dad obviously there as well but it's really him and his mom and and um it just it's very very interesting i'd like love to hear your thoughts about you know the role that the wider family played in his life um you know um i 
in terms of say, you know, the he talks about this golden tree and how, you know, I think it was a church. He saw this tree and all these people's names on the tree. And then going on, he started, um, you know, he basically vetted people in his life as a tree. Like some people are the, the branches, some people are the, the leaves and some people are the roots. And in that vein, um, you know, I'd love to hear you guys thoughts on the people, you know, it, the wider group of people in his life. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because I thought it was very interesting. And I don't know, do you guys vet people in, 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 you know, in terms of how they are in your life in that way? Like, you know, some people are your branches, some people are your leaves and some people are your roots. And so I'd love to, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Um, Lydia says, in during the low moments, we see him now. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, I just read that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, sorry, Lydia, I just read that. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I'm back to Lydia. Uh, but I can see how you saw Hire is Waiting as some of the same themes as Spare. Both he and Parry endured abuse, but rose above the circumstances. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so funny because that's one of the things I wanted to talk about as well. There are so many things about Spare and, and Tyler's life that I feel like it's really, really, there's a parallel there between his life and Harry and Meghan. And so it was no surprise that they connected because, and it's funny because I was thinking about that when he said um, he recognized Harry and Meghan, when he was talking to Meghan, he realized she was abused and they both were because of his mom, what he saw because of the abuse of his mom. And it stuck out for me because I was like, oh, wait, but you were also abused. He re and, and I think it's because part of me think is like, okay, you don't see like yourself, you know, what it felt. So he related it to his mom's abuse. You know, that's how he knew. But it's very interesting that he didn't relate it to the abuse he, he also suffered. And so there are a lot of parallels there for me in the way... Harry and Meghan were treated and also Tyler was treated. Um, obviously, Harry and Meghan didn't go through the physical abuse of beatings that his, you know, his mom and his dad, um, I'm sorry, his mom and hi him and his sisters, you know, actually he didn't say his sisters, he just said him. So I don't know, I'm assuming he beat his sisters as well, but he didn't say that in the book, so I don't want to go beyond what he said. He was the one, him and his mom is who we talked about that got the physical abuse. I'm assuming the others got too, but I don't know. It didn't say that in the book. Um, but yeah, there are definitely a lot of parallels. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys. What, what other parallels do you see between Harry and Meghan's um, situation and then what Tyler went through and how those two, how they relate to each other? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, Joe says, uh, tell us mother's words on God, talking to God and asking God for what you want hits home. Plus taking her family to church every week brought up memories of our church services. Wow. Well, okay. Gotcha. Now I see like, yeah, definitely bring back to, yeah, <laughs> bring up the emotions there. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Lydia says, I love the analogy, uh, the tree analogy. I do not, I do not do that, but perhaps I should. Um, some people are temporary in your life and fly away like leaves. Yeah. And that's exactly what he talks about. He talks about some people are only in your life for a season. You know, they're, they are there basically a lot of times it's for you to give to them. They just, they don't have, they don't have the strength to be able to feed you. And so they're there for a reason. He talks about it. he's not angry at those people, but he because he understands there's everyone is in a different place, you know. And then there are some people who are the branch people that they are stronger than the leaves and they can withstand some of the you know the storms you know that's go or goes on around his life. But 
they too, um, you know, at certain points don't have the, they may not have the strength to stick around the whole time, you know, with him and walk with him as he goes through certain things. And, um, you know, so he, you know, I guess I, also too, you know, he's not mad at them, but um, he, you know, that's where they are in his life. And then they are the rude people, the rude people who are with him through thick and thin, like his mom. And, you know, I'm sure other close friends who have just been through the ringer with him. And they are those people for him in his life. And um, I think, you know, he talked later on in the book, he talked about um, when he had his friend and they were by the grass and the grass was very beautiful and all of those things. And it was hot and she needed shade. And it was kind of an analogy of, you know, is knowing where people are in your life and where they fit in your life. Um, because it was like, you know, the grass is beautiful and all of those things, but you can't expect the grass to give you shade if you that's what you need if you need shade you need to go find a tree to go under a tree and you know to get the shade you need and what happens sometimes is like some you know some people are the leaves people and you need someone to be the root and they're not the root and then sometimes what happens is then we got we get upset because they can't give us the you know they can't give us the stability the love the encouragement that we need and then we, so we get mad at them because they can't give it, but they, they're just, they're not that person. They are the leaves and they don't have it in them to provide that for us. So we need to go find those people who are going to be the root people in our lives or the, you know, maybe we need some, we need some shade and we need, you know, the leaves and the branches there to shade us. And, and so they can provide that maybe, but they are not there to provide the support that you may need from the root and so i i love that i i love that and also that grass and uh, uh he loves trees <laughs> and that grass and tree analogy is like understanding where people are in our lives and not being upset at someone if they're a grass person because a grass can't provide shade then it's not made for that we need to find uh, tree people <laughs> with branches so we can get the shade and so i love i really love how yeah it's like yeah know where pe know what people can do and know what their strengths are and not expect them to be what they're not <laughs> it's very for me i was like yeah that's very very healthy <laughs> healthy way of looking at things um again i'm going to put the link in the show notes uh i'm sorry it's just show notes in this chin the chat so i'd love to hear your voice um i'd love to hear um, there are 164 people listening to us and there are people in the, also other people in the chat. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat as well, um, about the book. So please, um, let us know your thoughts in the chat about the book. So one of the things I also love, um, and the parallel with Harry and Megan is Tyler's relationship with his mom is it seems like Tyler's Tyler's dad, Harry's dad, and Megan's dad. <laughs> Somehow all three people have the pick uh, they have the worst fathers in the world. They just ended up with just the worst paternal side of them. And they all have this amazing moms who have been the jewels in their lives. And it's like, how is this possible that all three of them have the same situation where the moms are just, mm. and when you hear Tyler, it's like, you know, again, Tyler has other brothers and sisters, a, a brother and, and two sisters, but I love how he has taken hold of his mom's narrative and he just owns his mom. And I think of Harry, even though Harry has a, you know, the other brother, Harry owns his mom's legacy and he embraces it and he soaks it up and he lives in it and he revels in his mom's legacy and his mom's life and what she represented. And I see the same thing in Tyler. And it's like, wow, that is awesome. <laughs> you know, yes, very bad, bad fathers. Yep. Joan is like, yeah, they would, um, they should, there should be a show called Horrible Dads. 
uh, yeah, there, uh, it wasn't there like a movie or something called Horrible Boss or something. Yeah, for some reason they ended up in that same situation with really bad paternal side, you know, this physical abuse, mental abuse, just complete neglect, you know, and all of those things. And their moms have been just godsends in their life. And I just, you know, I, I. And again, talk about how three people, so, such different walks of life, can have the same <laughs> exact like relational issues. And you know, apparently Tyler also has. There was some stuff that he just sort of alluded to it a bit in the Harry and Meghan docu series about you know, I guess relatives when he you know started becoming wealthy, relatives starting to behave. Way some of them do when you become wealthy, <laughs> Megan could relate, you know. And it's just, it's really wild. It's really wild. Yes, kindred spirits. Because yeah, they have so much to, um, you know, so much um, in common. And it's just, it's just really wild. Um, Cynthia Ashton, hi Cynthia. Cynthia says, "Well, I believe. Uh, remember the service is universal. Uh, God created everything with purpose, whether we believe it or not. Well, whether we believe or not, everything in life was created with a purpose for serving. Every event is a teacher to us. Very true. Very, very, very true. Um, absolutely, very true. That is, yeah." <laughs> Um, another thing that I saw that was kind of parallel, um, uh, another thing that was, you know, Tyler talks about, you know, what it was like, obviously, to grow up with a father like Emmett, abusive situation, very negative a horrendous situation to grow up with that father and then learning in reverse in reverse learning and um now that he is a father undoing and, and not say undoing but making a decision to live his life the opposite of how he was raised and um do the things for his son that his father would never have done for him whether it's taking time whether it's encouraging whether it's loving him being patient with him and all those things a child needs and that tyler didn't get it's now what he is giving to his young son and that is another parallel I see with Harry and Meghan in the things that they didn't get in, you know, specifically Harry. Meghan grew up in a situation when she was growing up, she did have the love of both of her parents who then father changed, obviously, you know, a few years ago. But growing up, Harry had that situation and now he is having to reverse learn and not to be that way and break that cycle and be completely opposite of that for his kids. And that's another parallel that I saw. I'd love to hear if you guys saw picked up on any other parallels with um, Harry, um, with Harry and Meghan and his life. It's just wild how they, you know. <laughs> um, Uh, yep, Joan is like, uh, Harry decided to treat his children differently than how Charles has treated him and still is treating him. You know, um, I, it's, you know, it's one thing to do, to do that, but it must be so difficult knowing how desperately you need love from your dad and not getting it. And then it's almost like you're giving what you never have. And it's kind of like you're giving from empty. And I'm glad, you know, he's able to fill up that love tank with Megan and, you know, and his friends and stuff who have been loving to him. But it's like that relational empty, empty well from his, you know, the Windsors and trying to give that to, to, and to try to give love in that way to someone when you never had it must be so difficult. Must be so difficult. Um, and cookies and cream is like it's baby it's atrocious yes absolutely atrocious um let's see um uh, what is another oh another parallel that i saw was um 
you know um just talk about dream killers how you know just when harry and megan moved here they had all these dream you know came move here with all these dreams they you know they obviously got the netflix stuff and stuff and then they started sharing with us different things like investing and investing in um different you know whether it's um environmental stuff investing in clever investing in you know they started sharing all that stuff with us in hopes to encourage and inspire and then the moment they put that out in the world what happened the british tabloids came in and started attacking the people that they um that they're you know that they're investing in really made a mess of this started attacking and claiming that they were fraudulent and all of these things and then the moment they did that harry and megan pulled that back and you never see them talk about their investments anymore you never see them i mean even if, if you look at their website now they pulled their projects the projects that they're working on the future they pulled it you will not find anything on their website other than their foundation and even that the only specific thing that is on their website is the impact report that they just put out they pulled it all and because it must have been you know i'm sure they had a vision of sharing that so that way you know other people can be inspired especially among the black community to be investing in different companies and you know that people we don't really you know normally think of or normally know about like i never knew about clever or the other company before they put it out there and so we did episodes about that and because of people like those in the british press who came in and basically stomped on that they pulled it all away they had to take away their dream they had to take it back and not share it and it's so sad because people like those you know and those that's why Tyler started talking about you know protect your dreams protect the things that you care about because there are people out there that will destroy it and it's so sad that that you know that that's the case um let's see Uh, John says it's so universal that all three fathers came from completely different backgrounds and yet were horrible fathers. No one culture has a lock on bad fatherhood. I know, right? I know. That is just like unbelievable to me. Completely different culture, different background, different everything. And end up the three worst people. <laughs> just like amazing it's just it's it's unreal and then you the same could go for three women three women two of them you know passed on and one is still here with us three women completely different but yet have been the love of their children's lives and it's just it's it's amazing how that is you know and so this this stuff is you know and and, and this is why I'm happy that they're sharing it because it's universal. It is so many people, no matter what your race, your culture, your social standing, whatever, all go through this mess, you know, in some form or another. You know, um let's see what's something else I got out of this with this. Um Um another parallel that I was uh, that I saw was um how when Tyler decided that, you know, he is sad enough. I think it was 21. He said when he left, he decided that he was never going back to live under a house under the roof, Emmett, um, uh, Emmett's roof. He was not going to live in a home with Emmett ever again. And, um, you know, and how difficult it was it with him, obviously leaving and then having to find a job and then become homeless and couldn't, you know, afford. And then you have these dreams that you're trying to do. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to accomplish things and you have all these dreams and you know it just it the difficulty of you know making the choice to leave home and try to make it on your own and yes Harry and Megan were in a different you know financial situation and all of it but the difficulty was still there they had their difficulties in a different way in the sense of they were just like squashed all the time by especially the british press and you know and and trolls and all of people just attacking them for no reason and you know it just both of them making the decision is like enough is enough 
I don't care how hard it's going to be. I'm going to go out on faith and I'm going to leave this toxic situation. And I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, when Tyler in the, you know, in the Harry and Meghan Darkie series, that was the moment when Meghan left is when Tyler, when she connected with Tyler. And again, she didn't know him. And so chances that she knew Tyler's story was probably nil that she would have known, you know, all the things that he and how he could relate to that moment because he had to go through that moment as well because he had to make this decision to leave that situation, leave, you know, leave that familiarity and go off into the big bad world and, you know, the difficulties that came with that. So, yeah. Very interesting. Let's see. Bess uh, Bessane says, uh, Prince Charles is wealthy in material goods, but bankrupt emotionally. William is suffering too. Yeah, you know, the funny thing with that, yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. And it's, it's very interesting that William has not sought help. He has not sought the kind of help that he claims other people need. But he has never sought help for himself. He has never sought um, to, to deal with the anger that he obviously is there because every time he is written about, there's always that simmering anger, that anger that came out when he attacked Harry, that anger that comes out as, at Kate, that anger that comes out of the staff. He has never dealt with his anger. And that comes from that suffering, that comes from the pain, that comes from the trauma of losing your mother and having almost like an absent father who also, along with Harry, was thrown under the bus a lot in some, you know, not as much as Harry, obviously, but he was also used by his father for good press. You know, he was also... Um, uh, you know, he also got his phone bugged and all of that stuff. And, and, and so all of that stuff happened to him as well. And he has never dealt with that. He has never, ever dealt with it and, you know, and get some help to deal. And so you see this anger, anger. He's always furious. He's always incandescent with rage because he hasn't dealt with it. So, yeah. Um, and Joan says, money can't, um, isn't it so amazing, isn't it? Uh, money can't buy everything. Nope, it sure cannot. It sure can't. Um, let's see. Again, if anybody wants to call in, I'm not putting you on the spot, but if you ever want to call in, I'd love to hear your voice. Definitely do. Um, let's see. Ooh, talk about. You know, one of the things I love about Tyler is his reverence for the elderly people in his life. The people and reading the book, you get that sense of his reverence for older people, whether it's Aunt May, whether it's, um, uh, what's that, the blind man. What did you guys think of the, the his relationship with the man, um, the blind man who um, would walk, he would, uh, Mr. Butler, who um, he would, you know, put his arm, hand on his shoulder and walk, they walked to school so Mr. Butler could sit and sell his praline candies. Um, I was like, oh, I don't even know what that would taste like. <laughs> I don't know. What, but apparently, according to Tyler, it's delish, you know? And the kind of faith, you know, and I think that was one of the things too that helped Tyler um, is Mr. Butler's faith. And so I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on, you know, that, uh, his, uh, just his reverence for the older people and how, you know, the kind of impact they've had on his life. I'd love to hear your thoughts, too. And uh, thank you, Lydia. Um, please give us a like, uh, all, all 176 of you who are watching right now, definitely give us a like in the, in the, um, um, yeah. And if you, you know, again, if you're listening and you haven't subscribed and if you're new here, definitely go ahead and uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. And if you're new at subscribing, it will be a week before you can join our live chat. So, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, let's see what else he talked about. Oh, one of the very things that I really, it was very interesting to me was um, Tyler talking about just 
um, his journey from when he started his plays, you know, when um, the his first play, um, I know have been changed and, uh, you know, very excited, booked out a theater and all of that stuff except he booked it out on July 4th weekend. And it's like, and he he even had to admit like, nobody goes and you know, nobody goes to the theater July 4th, they barbecue. He rented out a 200 seat theater and only 35 people showed up, you know? And then for five years, putting every single thing that he had into um, this, trying to get his plays up and nothing, failure absolute failure where he got it was so broke he had to live in his car he was homeless you know and so um i'd love to hear your thoughts about him going from that for five whole years i mean will you hold on to a dream all this time trying and trying and losing more and more money until finally you start i mean you know I'd love to hear your thoughts about, you know, how you would have thought, how, what you would have done. I'd love to hear that. Um, Joe says, it's hilarious when Tyler said his mother attended church on Sundays, but Saturday nights was playing card and drinking, etc. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have those kind of, uh, you know, those kind of relationship with church. It's kind of like, I look at it as Lent and, um, you know, Ash Wednesday thing where, um, you know, you you do all the carnival and all the reveling, the you know the days and you know weeks before, and then all of a sudden you have to stop, and now all of a sudden you're holy, and now when you have this cross thing on the you know the ash thing they put under your forehead, and I I never bought into any of that stuff because I'm like that's so hypocritical. <laughs> I never bought into that. I'm like that's nonsense to me. But it's very, for me, it's just, that's the kind of thing that, that's how I parallel the both. But, you know, people are where they are. And it's like, look, if, if those are moments of her, um, you know, having some joy in her life, I, I can't, you know, knowing what she has been living through, you know, you can't begrudge someone having a moment where they're playing and having, you know, and having some kind of joy for them, you know, whatever we think of the choices it's very interesting yeah um uh, lydia says mr butler was like a surrogate father figure love that relationship his reverence for elderly is showing even in recent times he paid the taxes for the people to stay in their homes exactly yeah exactly i love that you know and even talked in the book about this elderly grandmother who had all of these uh, grandkids and lost their home and he took care of the family and gave them a home and all of that stuff his reverence for the elders in his life yeah mr butler and i love the time did you did you if you read you remember the time when mr but he didn't say anything and mr butler just stood on the road and wasn't asking for help and mr butler just knew he would show up <laughs> Because he prayed and he's like, you know, it comes a time you pray and you just be still and just trust that it'll happen. And he showed up, you know, and it just, yeah, definitely cemented his faith. Um, Lydia says, um, his mother needed an escape from that husband. Yeah. Yeah. Did I mean, did it surprise you that she stayed with him? Um, you know, in spite of the abuse, even the time when Tyler, you know, had to tell, told his mom that uh, he had molested someone um, in the family and the mom took the kids away and then he came and apologized and then mom went right back. Did it surprise you? I mean, Tyler, I, I know Tyler said, you know, he understood why because of how she was raised and how not how she was raised i'm sorry but the the experiences that she had you know with her marriage and also rape being raised in a jim crow era and feeling like you're not worthy of good things happening to you um but did it surprise you that she stayed uh let's see Lydia says not sure i could hold on to the vision for five years but i applaud him for enduring as as it has blessed him and many others with jobs and security, even our faves he blessed. I know, right? <laughs> Thank God he held on. Thank the Lord. You know, can you imagine for five years you're holding on to that? And the thing that about that play too, I know um, Tyler Perry's plays and his content is not for everyone. 
Um, myself included. I am not into some of the work. Like I'm not into the Medea and stuff. That's just not my, that's just not my comedy. It's not my thing. Um, like I, you know, I said, I, uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. I love that. I've seen that a few times and I love that. Um, you know, and so his content is not for everyone and not everybody appreciates it. I mean, I've gotten into fights with people about this, even on Twitter, because, uh, the, uh, you know, my thing is, even if I am not, you know, a lot of his content is not, is not my thing. I, I so respect him as a person and love him as a person and love what he stands for, what he believes in, how he does his business, his vision. Like I totally, I'm here for that, you know? And that's why I just, I love him as a person and what he's done for me. Like I am all here for that, whether, no matter what I think of the content, you know? And so, um, because so many people wanted him to have writers instead of writing his own plays and all of that stuff. And he's like, no, this is what I want to do. I build my own table. I want to write my own plays. I want to do my own stuff, you know? And I really love that about it. I love that, that he has that thing. And my, you know, people are like, no, 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 you should do. And it's like, you know what, if you don't like what Tyler Perry is doing, he built his own table and he can do what he wants. You can go build your own and then you do what you want, you know? But I love that he, you know, I absolutely love that he um, that he has stuck with it, built his table, you know, and done the things that he wanted to do the way he'd want to. And God, I mean, telling you, if it wasn't for him, where would Harry and Meghan be today? <laughs> if it wasn't for him sticking out with that, you know? So <laughs> I'm telling you, the angel in the making here. Cynthia says, um, no one could kill your dreams but you, God uh, of providence cause us to dream dreaming is outside of our control remember joseph from the scriptures you know i i, I yeah i'm two minds about that yeah some people can kill your dreams i mean you you know you have to allow them to and you know but you, some people have the mental strength to bounce back and not allow it to be killed but some people don't have that mental strength you know depending on their experience i think you know the experiences that we have a lot of times determine the kind of mental strength we have to withstand that kind of um you know discouraging thing and i've known there for me there are times people say things and it killed my spirit and it killed my desire to do something. And thank God I was raised with, you know, I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. And I have that, you know, in my mind. but not everybody has that, you know? So while I do agree that, you know, nobody can kill it, but you, people can definitely discourage you to the point where you don't want, you don't have the will to fight for it. So that's what I'd say about that. Um, yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, you know, when you have the will to fight and stick with it and that stick to itiveness, yeah, Joseph, definitely. <laughs> um, let's see. Going back to Tyler's mom, uh, Lydia said, I'm not surprised she stayed. That happens sadly today. It's a vicious, a vicious cycle. People get used to abuse. It becomes no a normal occurrence. Maxine felt stuck. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, he talked about grow her growing up in the Jim Crow era where, you know, Basically, you live the life of humiliation your entire life, you know, you're, you know, you're not worthy of, you know, you can't drink from the white people's school or you can't go to the school. You can't, I mean, all the Jim Crow stuff, you know, where they, where blacks were made to, you know, feel, and especially talk about a black people, black women, especially were the lowest of the lowest of the low, you know? And uh, she was in a place where, you know, she was never in a situation where she felt she deserved better or had the the power. I mean, look at, you know, it was so sad. I think one of the saddest thing in the book for me was talk about a dream killer was her su supposed honeymoon where she believed the lies of Emmett and then you know, they left what, what she thought was the honeymoon only to find out that he lied to her about everything. 
And then they ended up in this bar and not only do they not have a car or a farm, they don't even have a place to stay. And then he started abusing her for the for the rest of her life. The rest of, you know, until obviously Tyler becomes, you know, adult and you know, she was able to live a better life um, when Tyler took care of her. But for all these years, for decades, beating and abusing her. And I mean, talk about a dream killer. You know, and so it's hard to have dreams for yourself or believe you deserve better. So you you stick there and you take the abuse, unfortunately. And I think deep down in her heart, she, she really loved him. Unbelievable. Um, Cynthia Ashton says, money could buy a house, but not home. It may buy material things, but not contentment. Very, very, very true very very true um very true uh let's see what else a couple of other things that i gleaned from oh this is so uh, important because tyler so many because of all this negative stuff that was been in his life um Oh, jo before we get to that, Joan is giving us a peril. So, Spell, I noticed another amazing peril. Tyler, Harry, and Megan, despite bad dads, all decided to own life, all decided in their own lives to help others even before they meet each, oh, they met each other. That is so true. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they decided that. Um, uh, in their own lives that they're going to live a life of service. And so they, uh, that is, it's so wild that they have so, when I told you guys, when I read that and I was saw, you know, and after reading Spare, it was just like, wow, these two books go together so well. It definitely goes together so well. So yeah, that's definitely an incredible parallel. Um, even sticking to that, um, you know, when Tyler talks about, you know, when he, started becoming very successful and very wealthy. Um, one of the things that was happening in spite of the wealth, in spite of the success, was that he wasn't happy. And it was just, there was this side because he talks about, you know, when you have all these things, but in your heart there is un lack of forgiveness and all of that stuff and you, there's all this anger, it's hard to be happy. And that's one of the things that... Um, you know, that was one of the very interesting things because here he is having the very life that he want, the very life that he wanted, but he wasn't happy. And he wasn't happy until he decided to face his father. And then, you know, when his father, you know, basically blurted out about his own life, he started to learn how to forgive and let go. And um, that was very, very interesting to me. You know, and um, let's see what you guys are saying. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. You know, about how that can be applied in Harry and Meghan's life. Um, if it's, you know, I'm sure they're getting there and they're on their road to that way. You know, talking about it is part halfway there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that too. Um, Basani says, I'm so glad Tyler didn't perpetuate that abusive trend. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> so very very happy he did not um genie says um typically of a uh, typical of media absolutely awful they bu to bully someone into submission delete their support charities um when they're celebrating their independence and success i mean you know that's that's why they're there it seems to destroy and um again that's one of the reasons i'm sure harry and megan decided to pull in, you know, and protect their dreams and protect their investments and all of those things and not be, you know, outward because people are dream killers. They will destroy it, unfortunately. Um, and you see, like, even if you go on social media, any organization that the Sussexes are with, they 
trolls would descend on them and try and attack them in so many even you know i reposted i'm sure you guys got where harry's gonna be doing a speaking engagement on march 4th i mean if you go under some of the posts for it for example um penguin books or um the doctor that's gonna be there with harry under their post you will see trolls under there saying the most abusive things and so it just like you know again that's why I love the Sussexes. They don't they don't tell us things until they want to because they know. And even when they do, people will come and try to destroy it. Um, Lydia says he still had healing to do before he could enjoy the material gains. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that healing was facing and dealing with what his father had done to him. And having that, you know, go at each, you know, go at him and just like tell, you know, speak your mind and speak his truth. And so that he can get that off his heart. And then also the good thing was being open to, to hear his father as well. Um, Cookies and Cream says, Tyler said that he knew Meghan and Harry had been abused. Time uh, cut off Harry's funds, security, and leaked their location to the tabloids. It was a way of control and scare the Sussexes into returning. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so wild that God put the perfect person, like Meghan picked up the phone and she could not have called a more perfect person at that time than Tyler Perry who knew exactly what they have been through because he's walked those stairs steps before. And it just, it's, it's wild. Uh, Cynthia says, um, God King of fire in each of us from conception and he's in control to sustain that fire. Most of the time we ourselves are not aware of it because the things God uses, we despise. Very true. Very true. Um, very, very, very true. Um, let's see. Lydia says, the organization should turn off comments. I wish they would make that part of the agreement to appear to appear going forward. These trolls attack, these troll attacks are sickening. Yeah, that or joins uh, Spoutable. <laughs> Spoutable don't have trolls, you know, but definitely I know um, a couple of them I saw recently um, w turned off their comments when they spoke up, you know, when they posted about Harry and Meghan, they've turned it off. And I think that's what they all need to do to turn it off. I mean, but again, it's, it's up to some people don't really read their comments. So they don't, you know, some people don't even know it's there. They don't go back into comments and see what people are saying about it. But for the ones who do, I mean, definitely turn that off. There is no need to to you know have trolls under your posts and it's oddly enough uh you talk about the flip side of this yesterday i had an experience with that um there's this girl this woman on twitter who oddly enough she tweets about her love for the sussexes all the time but she also works for a tabloid and um i kind of got under her skin a while ago because i called her out because she also worked i'm like well you're saying all these things but you you work for a tabloid who do exactly that she was very happy about with me so she has been you know always complaining about trolls and how they attack her comments and all of that so finally yesterday i posted i was uh, i you know i tweeted to her i was like you know you do have the block option and you do have the mute option <laughs> for, for trolls i mean if you know if you're if you're concerned about trolls you do have those options available to you so did she go ahead and block the trolls who, who she, you know, would come into a joke? No, she didn't block them. Guess who she blocked? Me. <laughs> she blocked me. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, some people love the trolls. They're, that gives them engagement, I guess. So it's just, it's very wild. Some people are like, okay, I guess y'all are okay with being trolled. So there you go. Um... Catherine Byron. Hello, Catherine. Catherine says, Tyler lives in the spirit. That is why he is where he is needed. Again, I wish I could find a good Christian man like him. <laughs> Preferably him. <laughs> okay. I don't know what uh, Tyler's relationship status is. I don't know. <laughs> but hey, you never know. Um, you know, that's 
pray and go for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what his relationship status is. I know he has a son and he was in a relationship. So, but I don't know if that's the law. I literally have no idea. And I hadn't paid attention to that. So, and I didn't know, I didn't know he had a son before I read the book. I had literally no idea about this man's life at all, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, but uh, going back to, you know, his, the forgiveness part with um, enjoying the fruits of his labor now. And it's only when he was able to forgive and to be able to look on his father, I guess, with compassion and empathy for his father's um what his father went through. Now, I don't know what Megan's father went through. I do know what, you know, a little bit of what Charles went through because he wrote it. He, you know, he documents it in the Jonathan Dimbleby book. And it's very, um, and Harry has also talked about it. And, you know, so Charles did have a brutal childhood and he also had a mother who was very much like he said like basically a cold fish you know he was pretty much raised by nannies and so again that cycle that was not broken there he did the same exact thing to harry and so uh, and you know also to william can't you know obviously is there as well but especially to harry and so william got obviously better treatment because he is the quote unquote air. And so it just, um, again, it's with the Sussexes is, you know, and I'm sure because, um, they are talking, they have talked about what they have been through. Harry talked about, you know, sitting down and having those conversations and taking for the, for those in the Royal family to, um, you know, you know, be accountable for what they have done to them. But the thing about that is, some people, you know, and he talked about them apologizing. The problem with that is some people just don't think they've done anything wrong. And a lot of times they would never apologize. And, you know, and if <laughs> we've talked about this, white supremacists don't apologize for nothing. They will not apologize. They will gaslight you to death. And by the end of it, it will be all of your fault. And we've seen exactly that from the UK. They will abuse you and then they will gaslight you. And they will never apologize. And so this is where Harry and Meghan um, have got to decide. And they, I'm sure they've decided, you know, Harry talked about, they have, they, Harry talked about, you know, he knows that they may never, ever get an apology. They, they may never, you know, be held accountable for what they did to him and Meghan. So he, you know, and so that he also said that they have decided to just move on. And I'm glad that they're at that place. And I hope that moving on doesn't just mean, you know, let's just push it behind us, but to forgive from the heart because your heart needs to be free, to be free to, you know, love again, to be able to trust again. And so I'm happy to see that they have at least understand that even though people have done you wrong and you know, you'd want them to apologize. You'd want to them to be held accountable or at least to take, you know, take some responsibility for what they've done. Some people just won't, they would never apologize for what they did. They would probably make excuses for what they did. And again, especially those in the UK, they will gaslight you, you know? And so, but you have to find a way to forgive, even though, even if, you know, whether it's, writing. I mean, I had to do that for my past. You know, I had to write a letter and obviously the person, by the time I got to that place where, uh, you know, writing that letter, the person who, you know, did what they did to me, they weren't in, even in a position to even, would, he, would even get what I was saying because they had dementia by that time. And it was just like, you know, so I had to, so I had to get it off my hat and I had to write, you know, and it's just to get it off and to get to a place of forgiveness. And thank God I was able to get there, but I understand that one. It's like the person may not be in a position to even say, I'm sorry. <laughs> then you have to figure out how to forgive in spite of that to just to free your heart. So I, you know, I'm glad Tyler put that in there. And that, I was like, that's a great way for me to see how spare is and how that can help Harry and Meghan to be able to, you know, if they aren't there yet, to be able to help them to get to a place of 
whether they got it, whether they get the satisfaction that they, 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 or, you know, the apology that they are looking for and all of that stuff, whether they get it or not, they can be in a place where they can forgive and still look on that person with empathy, you know? So it's tough. It is a tough thing. I'm telling you, forgiveness is no joke. Forgiveness is no joke. I hate it in every sense of the word. I want justice. That's me. I'm like, oh, you did something to me. There needs to be justice. And all the thing I have to always remember is like, Petal, you better be, <laughs> you know, I want revenge. And I, that's how my mind works. And that's how I feel a lot of times when people do stuff to me. And I, you know, and I want things that are fair. If you, if you do something, you need to apologize for it. You, I want things to be fair. And I always remember it's like a good thing that God isn't fair because if he was fair, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> he is just, he never treats us as we deserve to be treated. And I'm grateful for that. So, <laughs> um, Joan says, Tyler, Harry, and Megan will always be blessed. They are living the Bible's wisdom of give and it shall be given to you. Exactly. Exactly. And Jeannie says, I like his humility, his humility spirit. Oh, his humble spirit. Okay. Or his humility. Uh, yeah, that's definitely there. I absolutely love that. That he knows at where stuff comes from. He knows and he credits where it comes from. Even if it's his Aunt May's old quilt. I love those stories of the old quilt um, and what that meant in his life. Kiki's and Green says, oh, she's talking to Lydia. Um, you, uh, you totally take away a person's safety net. They will have no choice but to return. Thank God the Sussexes have great people in their lives and help them like Tyler Perry. I'm telling you, Megan could not have picked a perfect, more perfect person to call in her moment of need. Like that was just like, oh my goodness. It's just like all the things that we see all the time when we talk about the ancestors stepping in and come. I'm like that hand, ugh, talking like God just sort of stepped in there like, okay, this is the person you need to call. And lo and behold, he understood everything that she was going through. Um, Lydia says, there can be forgiveness, but there does not mean a reconciliation. No, it doesn't. Um, both Prince Harry and Meghan will have to choose for themselves exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, and again, that it's hard. It is very, very hard, you know, um, because you might want to re reconcile, but the person doesn't want to reconcile with you. <laughs> what are you going to do? You still have to find a way to free your heart. So, <laughs> um, Jeannie says, uh, no, he wasn't surprised. Most common for women to remain in abusive. Oh, no, it wasn't surprised. Most common to me uh, for women to remain in abusive marriage, especially with a Christian mindset. Yeah, that is very prevalent among so quote unquote Christian, you know, and it's like, well, I, for some reason, there's this thing where you have to stay there and stick out the abuse and it's just like mm, no <laughs> you know no so and i'm like no <laughs> uh cookies and cream says um uh, lydia i agree you can forgive your abuser and love them from a distance you don't have to let that negativity back in your life exactly Exactly. You learn how to create boundaries. You don't have to let that in your life. Nobody, you know, we're not created to be abused, you know, and definitely. And that's why I love how what Megan did with the um, with her, um, you know, the Markle family. I, if, you, if you call them a family, I am so happy to see the boundary that she put up. That is like, uh, uh, this I will not tolerate that. And I don't doubt in spite of what her father has done to her, you don't just stop loving. I don't doubt that Megan loves her father. She still loves him. Of course she does. You know, that stuff doesn't go away, but you know, she put up a boundary there that she wouldn't tolerate that kind of abuse. That's on, no, you don't have to tolerate any of that. You learn, you learn how to love them from afar. So that may be something Harry may have to learn how to do himself, you know, and probably learning to do it now. So yeah. Um, 
And again, people will treat you, a lot of times they treat you the way you allow them to. If you refuse to be, you know, taken advantage of or refuse to be, you know, it's like, oh, no, 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 we can abuse you, but we expect you back for the coronation or we expect you back. And it's just like, uh, no, you know, it's just like, mm -mm. so, but we'll see. Um, Joan says, uh, forgiveness is fine. I was talking to Cookies and Green and Lydia. It's like, I was going to say that forgiveness is fine, but you don't have to remain around them and their negativity and hate, etc. Exactly. You can love them from afar. You don't have to put up with that behavior. Um, Bonnie Mighty. Hello, Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie says, uh, Megan and Harry forgive for themselves, not for their fathers. They have to forgive and God forgives them. Exactly. Definitely. Um, uh, Jeannie Hyde says, back in the day, ministers were against divorce or preaching about unequally yoked. So, so shut up and put up. Um, thank goodness it is changing. Explain a little bit more about that if you can, Jeannie. Um, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, uh, Bassani says, if I were Harry and Meghan, I would find it very hard to forgive and reconcile with Thomas and Samantha. <laughs> very, very difficult. I mean, again, those boundaries are there for them because you can't have a relationship with people who are abusive. I mean, how do you have that? You can't have... It's just, you can't do that. You also have to, yes, you love people, but you also have to love yourself enough to understand that, no, you're worthy of being loved. God doesn't treat you like that. So why should you allow other people to treat you like that? You know, you are worthy of love. You are the daughter of a king. You are worthy of love, you know? And I'm not talking king in terms of royal family king. <laughs> when I say king, it's God almighty, the king. So you are worthy of love. Nobody should, you should never allow, you know, someone to treat you that way. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, Laverta said, Tyler Perry's life illustrates that the rewards for those who persevere far exceeds the pain they come, that come before the success to be prepared for what happens when family members, uh, with family members when success arrives and he yeah briefly just mentioned that you know there's i guess a little drama went on with his you know with his family as well although i don't know the specifics of it but he's like you know yeah family members when you have some money and whatever family members could be weird and yeah so i'm assuming some stuff may have gone down with his family as well yeah it just he <laughs> But yes, very true that um, the, those wonderful rewards when you are able to persevere and you see the to see the fruits of your labor, I'm telling you, uh, it's just it's wonderful to see. Absolutely wonderful to see. And Bassini says, uh, Megan told Harry that he did not, she would not tolerate abusive language while they were cooking according to Spare. Oh, Yes. Yes, Megan had to put her foot down that she was not going to allow that cycle of abusive behavior to continue with her. And that's when Harry was like, oops, I better go get therapy and get myself fixed because I'm going to lose this woman. And I am so happy he made that decision. I'm so happy he made that decision. And that's because Megan is a woman who knows her worth and knows that she is worthy of being loved and worthy of being respected and being in a relationship that is loving and not abusive. And that's what needs, you know, and I'm sure she, you know, by her taking that stance, it's helped Harry to see his value as well, because we know what was going on according to Spare, what was happening at, in the royal family, how even their staff treated him. Like he was, you know, like they were royals and he wasn't. And even if he wasn't a royal, you don't treat people that way, you know? And so by being around someone that knows their own value has helped him to see his value. I mean, look at what Harry has been achieving. Again, Spares in his sixth week as number one around the world, you know? And look at what their, 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 their product of, of what they have been doing i mean they're not just royals doing stuff they are putting out quality work in every 
area that they're doing it and that's why it's so successful you know so value uh, harry values himself in a way now that never had value himself before you know so it's beautiful to see and that's what we're created for we're not created to be abused you know so um Cookies and Cream says, uh, she's talking to Lydia. Nobody's talking to me. She's only talking to Lydia. <laughs> um, but that's okay, Lydia. I'm stealing your, I'm stealing your post. Uh, Cookies and Cream's post to you. Um, uh, uh, Cookies and Cream says, uh, trust is something that has to be earned. Tugwork. <laughs> Thomas Marco and Charles have totally destroyed that trust. They are more than shown. They've more than shown they are capable of. They have completely this. Um, they have completely blown that when it comes to trust. And if you, you know, again, how those in the UK gaslight people. If you read their press, Harry is the one who they can't trust. They have destroyed any trust, but somehow. The, in their mind and their narrative is, oh, we can't say anything to Harry and Meghan because we can't trust them. They have broken trust with us. We have to forgive them. We have, to, you know, the royals have to extend that olive branch to them, not the other way around. Again, gaslighting. Um, Karen says, hi, Karen Werner. How are you? Karen says, forgiveness is for uh, the victims in order to move on and prosper and not for the abuser, for they know not what they do. They can help people. You can't help. You can help people that want to be helped. And reverse of that is true. You can't help other people who don't want to be helped, you know? So yeah, it's like forgiveness is... You know, and also too, I, I, I actually do, forgiveness is definitely for the person who is the victim because again, you know, to not forgive, I think Oprah is the first person I hear said that. I, I don't know if she coined it or she heard it from somewhere. She's like, you know, lack of forgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And so you forgive so you don't die. You know, you if you're the victim, you forgive so that your heart is not hardened by lack of forgiveness because that is what will kill you and on top of that you're the victim so as for a victim even though it's the hard thing you forgive so you don't die you know on the flip side the person who has committed you know the crime or whatever they did to you they also can benefit from that forgiveness because again, you know, forgiveness is un is like they don't deserve it. There's undeserved grace, you know. And so when I've done stuff, and I, I mean we've all done stuff that we are like we hurt someone, we've said things that we shouldn't say, we you know, we've all hurt someone in some way and desperately need for the person to understand and desperately want to apologize to the person to just make right whatever and then the person even though we don't you know they are under no obligation to forgive us for whatever it is we've done but when the person chooses out of the kindness of their heart to forgive and extend grace it does something to the person who committed the act you know it gives, frees them up to one, accept grace, to also the humility to see what they have done and the horror and to be able to change into a better person. So forgiveness helps the abuser as well, you know? So for me, I see it on both sides because I know when I'm forgiven for things, it just like, it's this weight because when you do stuff, it's like a weight on you. And when you're forgiven, it gives you hope that you can start over and you can try again and you can try to be a better person, you know? So I, I see it on both sides. So um, let's see. Loretta says, Harry trusts Megan's opinion and she sees, and she is his biggest cheerleader. Yeah, and they are both each other's cheerleaders. And I love that about that. <laughs> I absolutely love that about it. Um... TT, oh, hi TT Carter, how are you? He says, um, Harry and Meghan have forgiven, but move on, moved on. That's why karma takes over. There you go. Karma, the Lord and the ancestors. They have taken over <laughs> in so many ways. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. 
Cindy says, I'm sure Harry and Meghan in their wildest dream did not realize that the squad was there to serve them by defending them while they serve under the privilege, serve the underprivileged. God is absolutely sovereign. Yeah, here. Exactly. Um, let's see. Um, Jeannie says, I think it's up that the trolls, um, do right on this upcoming event with Harry, as it is the perfect material of examples to use about abuse and trauma. You are so right. You are so right. Yep. This is the perfect example of abuse and trauma, you know, and it's just, <laughs> and I mean, one of the things that I love with the event as well is that it's paid. And then also you have to, if you wanted to do a comment, you have to submit the comment beforehand and they'll vet the comment and all of that stuff. So in order for you to be on this, you're going to have to really do a lot to be in this event. It's not just there for the public. You're going to have to pay and you're going to have, you know, sit there and listen and, and you know, your comment may or may not be there. So only the people who are invested in this will take the time to pay for this event and to be a part of it. So I love that. Um, let's see. Audrey Davis. Hi, Audrey. Audrey says you can forgive and move on, but you don't forget and handle and handle them for a way. I'm not sure what that means. You don't, you can forgive and move on, but you don't forget and handle them away and that for a way. I'm not sure what the last part of it means. Um, I, I think in time it it gets easier and it you know it it fades. I mean you know obviously right in the moment you'll still remember because you're human. It's there in the memory. But as with time you learn you learn how to. And I think one of the things with forgiveness is like you can't just be well I forgive that person and then you never interact with the person or you know although there are times when you know there is no interaction but you have to replace that. Um, you have to replace whether you have interaction with the person or not. You have to replace those, whether it's the pain, the hurt, the anger, whatever you feel, you have to replace that with something. So that way that doesn't come back again, because you know what happens. Sometimes you can feel like, okay, I forgive this person in my heart. And then you didn't do anything about it. You didn't replace that with, with positive thoughts or positive memories with the person or some kind of positivity. And then you see them again and that same thing. And you're like, shoot, I, I thought I forgave them. And then it comes back again. And so that's why you have to replace those thoughts and those feelings and emotions with something positive or they will just keep staying there and you will just keep re remembering them. So definitely have to replace those. Um, whether you're in contact with the person or not. So I want to take a few more before we end, but this, I wanted to end with this and we can talk about this before we end. Tyler Perry talks about, um, clipped wings. And I love this when he talked about, he worked in a, a bird, a store, a pet store. And I think it was like an eagle or something like that was or a parrot, I think. And there was a parrot there and he was wondering why the parrot doesn't fly. And the owner, I think, told him that if there are certain, there are four feathers, I think, that if you cut them, the bird doesn't fly. And even though they have the other wings and after a while they will grow back and I think they will be able to. But if you clip those, the, even though it's a bird and the bird is designed to fly. And he talks about if the bird isn't flying, they're not living their full life. And so the same thing with us, if we are not flying and if we're not living, you know, if we're, you know, if we are not um, out there, you know, flying basically with whatever it is we're doing, then we're not living a full life. And he mentioned this one thing, he says bitterness. Bitterness is the things that clips our wings. And I was like, oh, and if we have bitterness, and, you know, and he was relating it back to the bitterness he felt towards his father and all the, you know, that what happened when he was growing up. And if we have bitterness, that's the thing that clips our wings and we're not able to fly. So unless we are able to get rid of that bitterness, then we are not going to be able to fly the way because it's, again, it's hard to be positive when you're bitter. It's hard to be, you know, a high achieving when you're bitter because that bitterness takes away your joy and and your joyful life and all the things. So I'd love to hear what you guys have, you know, if you have any thoughts on that, and then we'll just take a few more in the chat and we'll end. 
Um, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, chatting about the book, uh, all 202 of you and those of you in the chat. Thank you so much. I'd love to hear, again, hear your thoughts um, and other things as well. Um, uh, Cynthia says, looking around us, and we will behold the manifold blessings of God's mercies. We, when we deny those mercies, they become our nemesis. That is why the trolls and the haters hate. Hmm. Uh, look around. We put it out. That's why we deny the mercies. They become our miseries. That's why they. Okay, so that's what they're doing. That's why they hate. Okay, I understand. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Uh, Joyce, hi, Joyce. How are you? Joyce says, um, I've already registered and submitted my question. Can't wait to see the event. I know. Very exciting event. Again, it's going to be March 4th. The, in, the link is in the show. Um, in it, Well, I'll also put it in the show notes of this, but it's already in our community page. So if you haven't, go take a read about all about it. And uh, yeah, Harry will be there uh, with Dr. I don't know how he says Dr. Mate or Matt. I don't know how he says it, but they will be talking about loss and healing. And so um, I it's be very interesting to see if some of the things that they talk about are some of the things that Tyler Perry talked about of how he has been able to um, work through his anger and his bitterness and his lack of forgiveness and all of those things to get to a place of, of empathy and compassion and love and forgiveness now. So I would be very interesting to hear what they have to say. And I guess, and apparently the doctor is a, you know, expert in these areas, obviously. And so he also wrote a book about it. So very, very interesting. Um, it will be, and again, if there's no going to be no recording. So um, if you're not there, you're not, other than if people, excuse me, talk about it, we're not going to know what's said because there's no recording of it. So yeah. And I, and I think too, because of the topic matter. So yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Jeannie says, absolutely, Pedal, I can relate. Once you navigate through the process of forgiveness, life becomes liberating and fulfilling. It does. It does, man. When you let go of anger and lack of forgiveness, it frees you up. It totally frees you up. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> it just... <laughs> I know from when I speak, I'm telling you, I'm one of those people who like, you do something to me. I'm like, you need to feel exactly the pain you put me through. I am like, I'll be angry at God because he forgives people because I'm like, you just going to forgive that person. And they did this to me and they did that to me. And I want fairness. If they should do this to me, they should feel exactly what I feel. And I'm always reminded, you better be grateful. God is not fair. <laughs> he is just, he is not fair. So I have a hard lesson. Forgiveness is hard. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Karen is explaining a little bit further. She says, when I say forgiveness is for the victim, meaning yourself, is that it's a way of acceptance and protecting yourself at the same time recognizing that the offender is and not always them and that recognizing who the offender is and not allowing them to hurt you. Understood. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. Um, let's see. Uh, Lydia says, um, Apparel, the book was great. And if people have not read it, I encourage them to pick up a copy. And I hope we continue the book club. Busy next Saturday with a prince. <laughs> Uh, what prince is that? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, that's right. The NAACP seems the NAACP award shared by, uh, the NAACP award has been shared by Prince Harry already virtually. The markup CEO, Nahiba Saeed was honored. Oh, I figured because it is a, yeah, it was virtually. So Prince Harry did it. There you go. Okay. I'm telling you, Megan is like, I am just staying out of everything. So, <laughs> um, cool beans. So, um, I, it's uh, apparent it's going to be tonight, which I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember the exact time, but, um, 
um yeah it's gonna be tonight and so yeah and it's so funny i've been talking about harry and megan and i forgot my little harry and megan and tyler photo here i like this photo <laughs> of harry and megan and tyler so <laughs> i could share my harry and megan and tyler photo um let's see um lydia says i was hoping to see them both at the award but less likely now oh okay um well who knows maybe maybe not i you know again um i'm glad megan you know it's like this is harry's time let harry you know <laughs> let harry do his thing and she'll do her thing and i love the i love how they work i love the fact that they they let each other shine and um you know so i love that so we'll see but I'm happy that they are continued the award because I knew from last time they said it was a yearly. So it is a beautiful thing to see. So um, anyways, guys, well, thank you so much for hanging out and chatting about the book. And again, if you haven't gotten the book, if you haven't read it, definitely read it. Uh, you know, and I will come back to the Two Cents crew there. Um, we had other books in, in there that we... Um, you know that we that was on the list so for the next book we can pick another book whichever book and you know either from that list or uh, we can add others to it as well and we can see what other book we'd like to read for the next time so that is awesome um uh joan says um on a whole tyler book is an inspiration to people who are discouraged in achieving their goals perfect i absolutely agree with this absolutely and yeah i'd love to hear your final anything final you want to say about the book i would love to hear that as well yeah anything else you want to share with us and you know your review <laughs> your review of the book i totally would love to hear that but again if you haven't read the book i know bisaini hadn't read it and was waiting for a review so bisaini here are some reviews hopefully that helped and hopefully you would take a read because it definitely Definitely. A lot of it, like I said, parallels there. Um, Karen says, remember that William said that to Prince Harry when he, when he said he didn't know why he left, your offender don't always know why they are offending you. I'm that is very true. That is very true. That is very, very true. And so and that is why you forgive. Cause again, <laughs> yes, even though, you know, again, Prince William is a narcissist and they would, you know, they would glasslight you and claim, oh no, really? I did that? No, I didn't. You know, so yeah, I just, <laughs> and yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Lydia's like, now I can read Spare again. Joan, you have wrapped it up well. <laughs> no, Lydia, how about you try another book? <laughs> I know we're all addicts and we're all going right back to spare good and grief. So anyways, we'll give it a few weeks and then, or yeah, a couple of weeks before we pick another book, uh, you know, and then we can decide for the next time. But thank you guys so much. Um, uh, Cookies and Cream says, Tyler, book is worth reading. Um, Bisaini says, Pedal, great book review and podcast. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, good. We've convinced you to get the book. So awesome, Bisaini. I'm glad we, I'm glad it helped. <laughs> Lydia, Lydia the addict, the spare addict. But that's all right, Lydia. We all are. <laughs> um, um, and Cynthia says, forgiveness doesn't mean one forgets the wrong that's done to us. It means that you don't take out vengeance and retribution on the person who wronged us. That's definitely part of forgiveness. Um, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cookies and Cream says, everyone continue to pray for the Sussexes, Tyler, each other, and the world. Absolutely agree. And um, Victoria, hi, Victoria. Victoria from Bay says, hello, Petal. Everyone, I just want to say hello to you all. One week in vacation with my sister in, oh my gosh, you're in Paris. I'll catch up on the replay later. Hi, Pet Joan. Enjoy my, oh my goodness, you're living my fantasy right now, Victoria. Enjoy. I mean, gosh, you could have just told me I would have stayed in the suitcase. Just the idea of being in Paris right now would have been fantastic. But you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not jealous of nothing. <laughs> 
Enjoy, my love. Enjoy party. So there you go. Um, let's see. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out on a Saturday, talking about Higher is Waiting. Thank you so much for reading the book and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate you guys so very much. Um, I hope you all, um, you know, again, even if you weren't in the chat, I hope, you know, that you've enjoyed it. I hope it has been encouraging. I hope there are things in there that has inspired you to change or to add to your life or to whatever, whether it's reaching out to others and being that shoulder that someone could hold on and cross the street with, you know what I mean? As Tyler did, um, um, so I just really, you know, again, I really appreciate you guys. You inspire me in so many ways. And so I very much appreciate it. So anyways, guys, have a fantastic day. Um, again, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed, please click the notif uh, subscribe and click the notification bell. So, you know, when we drop a video, um, definitely, um, you know, share, like the video, join, if you're able, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to our awesome moderator. I know Lydia's here. I know uh, Karen. Oh, wait, did I say Karen M? I don't think I see Karen M in Trish Nelly, but Cookies and Cream was here. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you moderating. Thank you so much to our awesome Two Cents crew members. Uh, most weren't here today, but that's okay. Um, you know, this is Saturday. People got work to do, things to do, places to go. So, but thank you all so much for uh, supporting the channel in all the ways that you do. Again, from the kindness of your heart, you support the channel monthly. So I appreciate it. And all of you um, yeah, who support it, whether it's a uh, super chat, super thanks, super stickers, merchandise, all of the ways that you support. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, you are doing it from the kindness of your heart. So I appreciate it. So have a fantastic day, guys. I would most likely catch up with you on Monday. I'm not sure I'll be around tomorrow, but um, definitely catch up with you on Monday, Lord willing. Have a fantastic rest of the day and I will talk to you later. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>